How was your Easter? Yeah, it was great. I um I didn't have a fantastic sleep last night because of my baby daughter. So it's okay. I've got oh, coffee. So had a shower. I think I'm gonna be okay. <laughs> oh my god. Well, that's not a really good uh, start when you've got four days to cram all your work in. I know. Oh well, that's life. <laughs> it is. How's how's your new house? I love it. It finally is starting to look like a house. Um, we pretty much like undid all the boxes. Um, we got in trouble the other day for going to the beach, but we were allowed to go to Kmart to buy things <laughs> for the house. So we did that. <laughs> Doesn't make even sense. Though, yeah, I know. I mean, everyone was about one meter apart in Kmart, but they were about 60 meters apart on the beach. But you know what? <laughs> like, we'll just follow the law. It'll all be fine. <laughs> Apparently. I know. Well, guys, I'm going to introduce our guest for you today. Today we have Lucy Cousins, who's a very, very good journalist friend of mine, but she also is probably one of the most important journalists in Sydney, which I know you wouldn't say, but I do say. Um, <laughs> Lucy has been uh, the editor of Clio, a women's fitness magazine. She's currently the wellness editor of Marie Claire magazine, Women's Health magazine, Urban Sweat Sydney, of course. And then you write for pretty much everyone else too. I will write for anyone that pays me, but essentially, no, I, do, <laughs> I write for really good, good quality sites and good quality magazines that will have me. Um, but also I really like, I sort of specialize in the health and wellness space, a little bit of lifestyle as well, but health and wellness is kind of where I'm at at the moment. Perfect. You'll have to jump onto copy when it finally happens. I'm, I'm excited about that. <laughs> Oh my God, so am I. I've only been waiting like nine months for a website that was due after two months. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the challenges. So let's get started with why is storytelling so powerful for brands? I think um, for a couple of reasons. From the customer point of view, people are looking for authenticity these days and they're looking for stories to get behind and companies to get behind and small businesses to get behind. Uh, depending what area you work in, if you are an expert yourself, like a dietitian or a personal trainer, they want to know why. They want to know that you're not just doing it for a quick buck and that you actually care, especially in the, in the kind of world of, of wellness, which is huge at the moment. And wellness extends much further than just vitamins, you know, now it goes into health coaches and to all sorts of different things. But I think generally people want to connect with people. There's a lot going on in the world. We are bombarded with a lot of not fake news, but maybe inauthentic news or news that's not quite what it seems. And I think if you can actually grab someone, and you know, on metaphorically, <laughs> 1.5 metres away, um, on social media. <laughs> yes, that's right. Good point. Um, then you're more likely to sort of connect with them and be loyal to them. It's why influencers have, you know, become so big in the last few years, because in theory, you know, you're learning more about them and you're learning more about the, their story. So I think depending what your brand is, from a customer point of view, it's, it's a way to get, um, to cut through, you know, to find a brand that you connect with and believe in. And I think for brands, on the brand side of things, it's a way for you to explain your product without selling to people. So it's a way for you to sort of talk about, this is how I started it. This is why I started it. But you're not selling. You're actually just explaining the product. And people react to that a lot more. And I think in marketing terms, if you can elicit some empathy or some emotion from your customer, if you're looking at it from a marketing point of view, then they're more, they're more likely to, to engage with you and, and to buy from you. Yeah, I agree. And what about, why do you think there's more brands looking to create their own content for their own sites as well? Um, Partly because of that reason that you can connect with your customer on a different level and you can sell without selling and you can um, explain the reason of being, you know, so it's not just on the who are we page, it's actually kind of connecting and talking in your own words. But then on the other side of that, creating content is always good for your site in terms of ranking on Google. So, you know, Google will come past regularly and sweep a whole lot of sites and it looks for quality content. So it's not looking for a blog post that you chucked up this morning because you knew you had to put up a blog post, but you weren't sure what to write about, so you just wrote about the weather. It's not going to rank you for that. That's, you know, there's no point in doing that from a Google point of view. But if you yep. can put up quality content that um, 
is long enough and that's a big thing everyone always thinks you know asks about how long should long be and i know we're going to talk about that but i think yeah. quality content is the key so if you can get your uh, website looking and feeling quality and authentic full of quality and authenticness then not only will it connect with your readers but it'll also help you with your 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 reach absolutely well on that note when it comes to writing an article for your own website, what are some of your top tips for creating engaging content? How long should it be? What should people include? Um, yes, yeah. things like that. So that <laughs> is a bit of a blanket question. <laughs> no, no, that's right. It's, it's, a, it's a really good question. And it starts with thinking about who your customer are, who your, or who your reader is. If you just go straight for your reader, who, who are they? Um, what are they needing and what can you help them with in relation to your brand or your product? And I think in terms of length, you need to look at, um, there's a lot of debate online about um, length in terms of engagement and SEO ranking, but essentially as long as it's not too short or too long. And by too short, I mean yeah. less than 300 words. And by too long, I mean longer than about 2,500. So less than 300 just makes people feel like maybe why are they on the page? It's not, it's not giving them anything back. And from Google's point of view, you won't, it, it won't rank. Um, yeah. And then too long, 2,000, say 500, that's fine for Google. It seems to be okay with that, except that there'll be yeah. less engagement. So less engagement means people are kind of, you know, they won't stay on to read the whole article. They might not get the points you're talking about. But in terms of yeah. topic, I think you need to think about what, what can you add to the conversation? So, you know, if you have a topic that you want to write about, just jump, jump on Google and type what you would type if you were looking for that content yourself and see what else is out there. I think a lot of people, the problem that they do is they think, I want to write about something that there's lots of topics on, like say gut health, which is huge, right? Yeah. They'll, they'll do what they want to write, but with, they won't do the research. So if you put in how to fix my gut health on Google, you'll find a gazillion articles. So then you need to look at what angle can I take? What information can I give that's different from everything else that's on there? And mm -hmm. how can I make, you know, my readers feel like I'm giving them something, something that they haven't read before? That's such a good point. Absolutely. Yeah. So, no, I think so. <laughs> so I'm going to make it a little bit more niche because I know whenever I do a workshop, people are like, but what about my business? So let's say for a gym or a studio or a personal trainer who wants to be mm -hmm. featured in the media, what sorts of stories should they look at to get the journalists interested in publishing them with um, engaging content? And the reason I'm asking this question is because like a lot of my clients will be let's say they're a personal trainer and they specialize in booty bands. They'll literally just be ramming that down and it's like just doing a, this is why booty bands are good, blah, 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 blah. But it ends up being more like an about us story than a story. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the, pro the problem with that particular one is that if I'm not interested in booty bands, I'm not going to even open the article. Whereas if you're looking at, you know, how to get um, a bum like JLo, then I would, look at that and perhaps within that article there's it talks about the different ways you can do it and one of the methods is booty band so i think yeah, um yeah. you broaden your reach by making sure that you have um a topic that will appeal to more people than just the niche that you're looking at so yeah looking at a bigger cross-section of society hopefully clicking on that link so if you're if you're going to email um are you talking about in the media or on their own sites i'm saying in the media in the media so if you're contacting yeah. journalists or editors um, first, I think the most important thing is to establish why they should listen to you. So who are you? Um, what kind of expert are you? You know, are you an exercise physiologist? Are you a personal trainer that have done it, has done it for 14 years? Are you a personal trainer that specializes in postnatal or prenatal? Or are you a, post, are you a personal trainer, but you're also a climber? There's also all sorts of different ways you can differentiate yourself um, within the, the area that you work in. You just have to find out why you're different and everyone is different so there'll be a reason why you're different and start yeah. with that when you're contacting the media so you're the expert and if you're not uh, if you're selling say a product uh, or you're a gym and you're not a personal trainer maybe you're a gym owner but you're not a personal trainer then obviously you're looking at the gym why is the gym different who and if you're if your gym doesn't appear to be different from the one down the road why are your customers or your your gym goers clients <laughs> why are they different Maybe you've got um, three people that have climbed Everest that 
track, you know, that work out there, or maybe you're all um, about runners, you know. So I yeah. think it's it's just working out your specific difference and then pitching that to journalists because journalists get a lot of emails that um, that talk about, oh, I've got a nutrition, you know, I've got a nutritionist as an expert that can talk about um, snacks. Well, that's great. I mean, everyone knows a nutritionist that can talk about snacks. What yeah. is what is their angle? I mean, snacks yes. are great. I'll always talk about snacks. But what is <laughs> what is their angle? What can they tell me that's different from a nutritionist that I might have on the books? You know, like yeah. every journalist will have a little black book of experts that they know that they can go to. Um, yeah. Mine is basically just you. <laughs> <laughs> I just go to you. Um, you find me well, expert. Well, thanks to but... <laughs> expert club, I've got like every expert. <laughs> yeah, Sorry. exactly. But no, I mean, every expert will have a group of, of experts that they... Sorry every editor or writer will have a group of experts that they use and so you have to try and work out how you're going to be different to their experts and there's so many ways to do that but essentially it's just about putting yourself into a position of authority um, mm -hmm. and different to different to what's on the market and again that google tip of going on and, and looking at your area of expertise and just google that area of expertise just to see what other people will see when they google it you know yeah exactly so it can be a little different and would someone's content change much for what they're providing to a journalist compared to what they're providing on their own website? I would hope so, yes. Yeah. So on your own website, you'd have your own, your own voice, your own brand. Maybe you've got a quirky sense of humour or maybe you want it to be very straight and scientific. Whatever tone your website is, that's your choice and that is 100% your domain. If you're writing for a journalist or providing quotes for a journalist, that's two different things. So if you're writing for a journalist and they've said, great, can you, uh, can you write me a 600-word article on snacking, then you'll need to have a look at their their tone so for example if you're writing for um women's weekly they have a health section their readers are older so you'll be looking at 50 plus so the language that you use is not going to include you know a lot of abbreviations or references to things that younger people would be interested in but if you're writing for pedestrian then go crazy then use yeah. every abbreviation you can and swear so it's your tone should change in yeah. terms of quotes um, the quotes obviously are in your voice. You don't need to write in anyone else's voice, but the references still need to be appropriate. So um, within your quote, uh, if, you're, if they've sent you like a bunch of, of questions to answer, within those, within those questions, you really do need to keep your references um, relevant for the audience of that magazine. And, you know, you don't need to know every magazine. So you can actually just say, hey, um, uh, I don't know who we're thinking of. Hey, Men's Health, who's your, who's your actual reader? You know, and you can, you can ask the journalists if they, if they said, hey, can you answer these five questions for me? Just write back, great. Can you just give me a bit of background about who your reader is if you're not sure? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, I do have a laugh sometimes when people, I send them, let's say, an interview for Men's Health or Men's Fitness and they send me back references to women. Yeah, exactly. Like, and so it's just little things like that. Me. No, and that's the thing. If you can provide clean copy and clean quotes to an editor or a journalist, they will come back to you time and time and time again. Exactly. And, you know, that also comes back to working out as a brand or an expert who your audience is, you know. Is your, is your audience all women? And if it is, that's exactly. totally fine. But just make sure that all your references on your site are for your audience. Exactly. Yeah, you don't want to be too broad because then you'll lose everyone. Yeah, exactly. Um, so last question obviously some brands you know they don't have they're very busy they don't have time to create content but it's still important that it's their tips and advice so if they're coming to reach out to someone like you to help them write it what's the best what's the things they need to keep in mind when it comes to briefing you to make sure it's their voice and their comments and things like that if they can't write it themselves sure um, my, I think my first reaction to that is make sure you get a writer that knows what they're doing because then you shouldn't have to tell them what your tone is. You shouldn't have to tell them um, what works because a good writer will, know, will do their research on your brand and they'll look at what's on your blog already and they won't repeat things and they'll write in the style of your blog. So the first thing would be to get a writer that you trust, that's recommended, that can do, you know, do blogs um, or content that you need. Uh, secondly, it's always good if you have some real no-nos, it's always good to tell writers. So certain brands have um, 
ways they won't talk. Like when I was editing Women's Fitness, we would never say weight loss. We'd say slim down, tone up, tone down, maintain your yep. weight. We'd never talk about losing fat, weight loss. It just wasn't within the brand. But yep. if you're Sam Wood, for example, Sam Wood is all about weight loss and he's all about burning fat and burning calories. And, you know, it's, it depends per brand. But if you have some real set no-nos, then definitely let the, the writer know just so that they can fit that in. Um, as they write it and not have to go back over it. Um, yeah. And then also length is really good. If you're expecting a blog and in your mind you think blogs are 600 words and someone hands you a 2,000 word essay, if that's very different to the rest of your site, then again, it's not going to go well. But exactly. the, the, these are the kind of issues that if you hire a good writer, <laughs> yeah. you shouldn't have to worry about those things. Exactly. And do you have any last tips for people when it comes to creating content and sharing their brand's message? Um, I think just doing a little bit, uh, like what we said at the start of this interview, a little bit of research into your area and what other content is around. And one of the reasons I say that is not only for your readers, because you need to give them something different, but what Google has started to do uh, since its last few updates is it can scan your website and it will compare it to other websites in your field. So if you're creating content that isn't actually quality or isn't completely different or is duplicate which is a massive no-no so if you're republishing your own blogs or republishing other people's blogs it just a it won't help you with your readers anyway but it, it, it'll get you penalized on google which at the moment when we're all in lockdown doesn't matter what <laughs> what your product is that's not a good yeah. thing so no, yeah make sure make sure that your your blog content is true to you true to your brand but a little bit different Perfect. Oh, great. Thank you so much, Lucy. And thanks for coming no on. Worries. Um, I'm going to download this and um, put it onto Instagram TV and YouTube and I'll send you a copy. So anyone who came in late is welcome to watch the whole thing. And uh, yeah, any, if anyone has any requests or questions for Lucy or requests for people I interview, please let me know. Amazing. <laughs> thanks, Britt. Lovely to talk Bye. to you. <laughs>